Hi, everyone. Hello. Hey, how, are you? how you doing? Oh, great, great. Thanks for asking. Uh, so I saw the first two episodes, and I love the show so far. So thank you very much for your time. Um, for starters, I'd love to get your thoughts on Dune Part 1 and 2 and ask how familiar you, familiar you were with the Dune universe before coming on board with Prophecy. Well, we'd all seen Dune 1. Um, we started shooting just after that. and Loved it. I think we all loved it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lucky to see it before we were cast. Um, and then, obviously, I, w I remember going to see Dune 2, so even more excited because, yes. obviously, we were part of that world already and, mm. and being able to go to the, the cinema and see that a couple of times because it was so good. Um, but, yeah, that was that was the level of my familiarity with, with Dune. Yeah, same. Like, I, I, I knew about the book, but it was when I first saw the, the part one film that I just fell in love with the universe. Uh, my grandpa introduced me to the books when I was much, much younger, so... That was kind of my first introduction. And then, yeah, once the films came out, I became quite obsessed with it. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. My grandpa did the same thing for me with Star Wars, so that's cool. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, were either of you influenced at all by the performances in the films when it came to shaping your own approach to this story? Not, no, because it's so many years before, like 10,000 yeah. years before the storylines in the film, so I feel like... It, and and they're uh, original, you know, new characters. Mm. So I, I I didn't shape my my role inspired by the films, even though I love the films. But yeah, yeah, this was kind of like just digging into this uh, this story and the scripts and yeah. and through conversations with Allison for background stories. That's it, yeah, and we have, you know the the books um, like Sisterhood of Dune trilogy. Like we can get a lot of our backstory from there coming yeah. into this this time period. So. I think that was more important because it's hard to project anything from the future and yeah. bring that back because especially Atreides um, is in such a different place in the show to where it is uh, obviously in the movies. Yeah, yeah, I think all of our characters are quite different to the characters in the films as well. There's yeah. like obviously the same vein and the same tone and similar vibes, but the I think the way that our characters come across, they're quite different but it yeah. still fits the same I, I suppose universe if that makes sense mm. yeah. oh yeah of course now chris how long did you train in sword fighting to play kieran uh well we both trained together um, we were lucky to get a month before we shot of just training before like we had to do any any of our scenes so um we would be in every day two hours minimum and we it was like back. a boot camp it was like a boot camp yeah. and I, we look back <laughs> at the videos of the first day or the first couple of days and we would not very good at all um so the stunt people were very patient with us and and we came a long way but we got to a place where we felt like we could sell it and also do that in a safe way and yeah. um, that was important and and such like, a nice way for us as well us to, bond, to, yeah. to bond and connect because our characters they you know you train yeah. my characters exactly, so it was yeah. nice that we actually got to do that in real yeah. time with real trainers yeah with real trainers <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. um, hypothetical question, but who do you think wins in a sword fight between Kieran, Duncan Idaho, or Gurney Halleck? Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, you put me up against the bit. <laughs> they might have the size, you know, especially uh, Duncan Idaho might have the size and the reach. But um, I don't know. I've got to back Kieran, you know. I feel like I feel I've got like back Kieran's Kieran. really to. good. Yeah. Kieran's, yeah. I've got to go with Kieran. I've got to, I've got to back us. Yeah. Swordmaster will celebrate yeah. with us, you know. So. <laughs> I believe in Kieran. Thank you. Thank you, Princess. Yeah, I think you're in the <laughs> I think you can take it. No problem at all. Uh, Sarah and Josh, you know, House Carino traces its history back eons to the Byzantine Empire. In, in that sense of history, uh, is there like a weight that your characters have to deal with with that? Well, I feel like being born into a, such a powerful royal family there's a lot to deal with for for both of our characters you know there's a yeah. lot of things that comes with that you know there's the obviously there's the wealth and the status and 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 that but there's also responsibilities and pressure the, and and i think there's a lot of pressure especially in the time period that we're coming into it the carino yeah. household i guess hasn't got as firm a grasp on the powers it does i guess uh, in the film franchise because mm -hmm. all the houses are kind of warring again like, over spice. Yeah. But um, I think you see in this series that there's, if they're all, the, all the great houses kind of ganged up together, then Carino, the Carino family probably wouldn't have a stronger tie to. Yeah, they're really the dependent trade. on the alliances. Yeah. And, and as you see in the first episode, there, there are some problems that need to be solved immediately. 
Yeah. Quite One cool. thing I love about the show. Um, <laughs> now. <laughs> anyway, no spoilers, but yeah, uh, uh, this, the sets are are just stunning, right? I mean, they, they really capture the vastness and detail of that whole Dune universe. Um, was there a particular set or location that left you guys in awe or helped you get into character in a way that you didn't expect? Yes. the uh, Like the palace. Mm. It was so amazing. Like the throne room, Princess Inez's bedroom is bigger than my real life apartment. It's <laughs> huge. And it was it was just like being there and that everything is practically built and all the props are usable. You can use everything mm. in the room. It's just for an actor, it's just a dream because you are actually there. You don't have to pretend. Yeah, and it's you super know? immersive and like just yeah. the scale of it, I think helps you drop into this world and realize how big it is. And yeah. when you have, when you fill that throne room up with like all the other great houses or for whatever ceremony is going on, you can, you really feel that energy and yeah. it's kind of all directed towards the throne and standing up there, you can, you just feel it, which helps. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, it was the spice then for my character kind of um, just unbelievable sci-fi looking set, but so detailed and so nuanced in its ways. And um, it kind of felt like the place where Kieran, relaxes you know takes off his sword and and lets loose a little bit that's that's so cool Um, (laughs) now prophecy you know it's already kind of being compared to game of thrones in a lot of ways for its complex power struggles what do you think makes dune prophecy unique and sets it apart from other shows featuring similar power dynamics well the fact that it's you know the origin story of the Bene Gesserit and it's a story that's never been told on screen before you know and so that's that's very Absolutely. unique I yeah. think there's also a real parallel in in you know some of the issues that we're having in the world right now especially yeah. when you look at AI and the you know this this has taken place you know years after the machine wars and after the the robots had risen and stuff like that so there's a kind of real take on what life could be like and how the effects there and the strain that that puts on people, um, Mm. which is a pretty unique look and quite topical. Yeah. And also I think, you know, it, it, you know, it isn't an an epic show, but I feel like it's so grounded, like Mm -hmm. the characters, it's so, it feels so human because they're all so complex and no one is bad, just bad or just good. You know, it's, Nothing is ever what meets the eye, but I feel like the things they're going through and dealing with is something that most of us can identify with, you yeah. know? And and I think that's that's really cool that yeah. you have this epic show, but it still feels intimate when you yeah. watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, like an intimate yeah. drama. There's like every character is so flawed, yet mm-hmm. everything's so grand at the yeah. same time. Yeah, and relevant to today's stuff yeah. going on in our society as well. I, I completely agree. Uh, last question for you guys. Obviously, spice is the most powerful substance in Dune. Many people become addicted to it just for fun. What's one spice in your kitchen that you're borderline addicted to? Ooh. Well, I'm British and we're known for bland flavors. So <laughs> not really. Um, a lot of yeah. our food's but you're probably salt. But I know my wife loves that um, everything but the bagel thing. That's yeah. It's like, I don't know that. It's like everything that they, I mean, ah. you, you've got to know, right? It's very American. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've had that before. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's My great. wife's addicted to that and that's on everything at the moment. Well, I love like chili or paprika, I think. Yeah. Yeah. My, Spicy. <laughs> yeah. Mine would be chili as well. Like it's not a, like, I guess a spice, but I really love sriracha. Yeah, I, yeah, like, I, I, I put that on everything. I put it on everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why didn't I know that about you? Like we have I know. This yeah. is Josh, by the way. Yeah. Hi. 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 <laughs> yeah. Awesome, guys. Like I said, thank, I love the show so far. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay.